I've got a smile on my face because I've just touched down at one of my favourite cities, Istanbul, crossroads to the world where Europe meets Asia, where the Mediterranean is linked to the Black Sea through the Bosphorus, a city that brings humanity together. It's my first opportunity to sample Istanbul's new airport, which has an amazing number of connections to over 300 cities worldwide. Yes, you could make a smooth transfer from one to the other, but it's a much better idea to spend 48 hours in Istanbul. It's the most beautiful place in the world. You can be sure of that. I love it so much. The airport was the busiest in Europe in 2022, yet because it has only a single terminal, you certainly don't feel overwhelmed. This vast new aviation empire, fortunately, has very good ground transportation. Buses and taxis run from the airport to all parts of the city, but the fast metro link is best for speed and value. The journey into town only takes 24 minutes and it costs you 10 Turkish lira, that's less than a pound. Istanbul has hundreds of hotels and I've stayed in a fair few of them, but I always like to explore the options in a fresh part of the city, and this time it's the Pera district, well placed for many of the sites as well as excellent nearby restaurants. I'm checking in to the Radisson Blue. Istanbul is a city that is all about energy, and therefore you need to be able to recharge somewhere that is big enough, comfortable enough, and quiet enough for you to get that all important sleep to make the most of this fabulous city. But my favorite thing about the Radisson Blue Pera is the bar on the top floor, and in particular, the view, very inspirational. Come and have a look at two other fascinating options within easy walking distance, starting with the Marmara Pera, which has a superb penthouse suite offering high altitude views right across the city. And if you're splashing out, check out the rooftop. It's not the intercontinental, but it does have a pool with an intercontinental view. The foreground is Europe, the background is Asia. Meanwhile, downstairs... An old wreck that's been on the road for decades. But enough about me. I love this sidecar in the lobby. For extravagant 19th century style and a celebrity guest list that's included Greta Garbo and Ernest Hemingway, the Pera Palace Hotel is the place to be. This exquisitely designed and emphatically palatial abode owes its existence to one of the most celebrated trains in the world. The Pera Palace was originally made in 1892 to host Orient Express guests because there were nowhere to stay for those VIPs, luxury guests. This was the only place in Istanbul where you could see the Bosporus, the historical peninsula, as well as the Golden Horn. So this was the spot at that time. Here's the antique lift. Yes, a real piece of living history. And apparently you can sometimes see an antique cameraman in the mirror. The Pera Palace feels to me like a time machine transporting you to a more glamorous age. Another famous and frequent guest who arrived in Istanbul aboard the Orient Express from Paris was the writer Agatha Christie. She was inspired by the journey to create one of her most celebrated novels. It would be a crime 
not to visit the Agatha Christie room. Yes, this is where the mystery novelist wrote part of Murder on the Orient Express. Yes, she did. And this was her laptop. Just getting my bearings, planning my day and finding some inspiration. The iconic Galata Tower delivers a stunning overview of the city. Try to get here when it opens at 8.30 a.m. What I love about the Galata Tower is that it's an ancient monument with a 360 degree view across continents and seas. Start your day with a view of the end of Europe just there and the start of Asia across the Bosphorus, that neck of water leading between the Black Sea in the north and the Sea of Marmara, the Mediterranean in the south. The most ancient part of Istanbul is across the Golden Horn, an inlet, and you can see the Topkapi Palace, the Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque. About to enter probably the greatest retailing emporium on the planet, the Grand Bazaar. It began life in 1481 on the orders of the Ottoman Sultan known as Mehmet the Conqueror. Over the years, the bazaar has evolved into a labyrinthine sprawl, selling everything from gold and silverware to musical instruments and ceramics. If you can't find it at the bazaar's 4,000 stores, you're probably better off without it. Textiles are a strong suit too, with an abundance of choice. We are buying fabrics from all over Turkey. Lots of colors, we like colors. Turkish people love colors. It's, it's such a beautiful place and we are proud to be here. A five minute walk north towards the Golden Horn takes you to the Spice Bazaar. If you're a spice boy or girl, then this is paradise. The Spice Bazaar was created in the 1660s, paid for by taxes on goods imported from Egypt and therefore also known as the Egyptian Bazaar. But I think it's more of a Turkish delight. I'm here all week. I wish I was. Istanbul has a wealth of shops selling what I describe as antiques and curios of varying vintages. I love browsing in the Chukur Jama area. It's full of all kinds of intriguing shops where, well, everything from trash to treasures. In Istanbul, you're really more than about 10 meters from the next eating opportunity. And for my lunch today, I'm going to have burek, please, a potato. If I may, this is pastry and all sorts of other good things. And a cup of tea, please. Just about two pounds. Not only can you eat delicious food very affordably, you also get to experience your lunch absolutely on the street. Thank you. Indoor restaurants are also available. In particular, Haja Abdullah. This place dates from 1888 and it might look a little formal and perhaps not the place for a swift bite of lunch. But in fact, because all the food is prepared earlier, you can be in and out having had a lovely swift feast very successfully. In an unexpected bonus, one fellow customer, a teacher named Ganza, kindly volunteered to teach me some of the basics of Turkish. Merhaba. It means hi. Nasılsın? Nasılsın? How are you? How are you? Çok iyiyim. Çok iyiyim. I'm very well. I'm very well. Teşekkürler. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hoşçakal. Hoşçakal. It's very important because I am British. Two beers, please. İki bira lütfen. İki bira lütfen. And I also need to know, my friend is paying. 
<gülüyor> Arkadaşım ödüyor. <gülüyor> Istanbul's cultural life could entertain you for a year, let alone an afternoon. There's a frankly ridiculous amount to see. So let me pick out my personal favourites, ancient and modern, starting with ancient. Istanbul has a very deep history, as you find out at the Basilica Sistan Museum. Fifteen centuries ago, the Byzantine Emperor Justinian created a vast water tank with a ceiling supported by more than 300 marble columns, all fed by aqueducts with fresh water from springs far from the city. Imagine the biggest cathedral you have ever visited, created underground and now thankfully open for us tourists to stand and wonder. The work of ancient engineers has now been augmented by modern artists. The ambition of the 6th century builders of this system was extraordinary, as is the 21st century creativity that's brought the subterranean space to life. For more innovation and imagination from the modern world, just head along Istanbul's main commercial street, Istiklal. At number 163, step into the Muzur apartment building, artistic heaven. It's the home of Gallery Nev, a cutting-edge space featuring the work of young artists. And that's just the start. One floor down takes you to the Zilberman Gallery, which hosts 10 or more exhibitions a year, with works that are challenging and intriguing. Mısır apartmanı actually it's a very historical building and it's a very prominent building on İstiklal. It's uh, one of the very well known um, buildings that hosts so many um, artists, exhibitions, other galleries. So it's it's a very um, signified and important building. We represent more than 30 artists. They're all international artists from I'm going to say all around the world. We have, of course, we have artists represented from Turkey, but we also have artists from Hong Kong to Israel to Oslo to to Germany. So um, that's why I can say Zilberman is an international gallery. Whatever your taste in art, you'll find something in Istanbul to satisfy your soul. But what about the body? I've built up quite a thirst, so I'm going off in search of a new bar. This was the headquarters of the Deutsche Orient Bank, the German financial institution which actually created the railway on which the Orient Express ran. It's now a boutique hotel, but wherever you're staying, it's worth investing a bit of time and visiting the bar. Uh, just uh, heading down to the vault to um, check my balance. Taking financial services to another level. I think Badu has the best stocked bar in Istanbul. There are 30 different Scotch whiskies. There's American, Irish, Canadian and Japanese whisky. If you want white wine or red wine, there's dozens of Turkish varieties to choose. And if all you want is a beer, that's fine too. From a secret retreat to high altitude heaven. The Monkey Bar is my favourite place to watch the sunset over the Golden Horn. And they've got all kinds of interesting cocktails. Monkey business, English breakfast, which is based on gin, not tea, and hot passion. I'm going to stick with a cold beer. If you live to eat, you'll love dining out in Istanbul. Join me on a gastronomic pilgrimage to Kerşebaşı in the Levent district, which specializes in cuisine from Adana in South Central Turkey, home to that perennial favorite, the kebab, served here in style. One thing you might find quite unusual is the way you choose your starters. Not from the menu, but from your good friend here who is going to present a whole selection. Don't they look great? 
My goodness, I think I'm going to go for some of the beans, some of the uh, walnut and aubergine, and maybe a bit of salad. Heavenly flavours, convivial surroundings. Your appreciation of the kebab will be changed forever. And you'll always remember how well you dined in Istanbul. Meanwhile, back in the city centre, I just love Markeme Lokantasur, and I love particularly the tradition here, which is that you sharpen your appetite with the national drink, Raki. 45% alcohol, flavoured with aniseed. It's a grape-based drink that has been very highly distilled, and I think that's probably quite enough for me. Thank you. Given that it's so strong, it's typical to add some water, which is actually a very good idea. Enjoy. Thank you. I love a ritual. Mm. I really enjoy dining alone. You can properly appreciate the flavours, the textures, the surroundings. But I love even more dining with the crew at the end of our long day's shoot. Sherefe. Sherefe. There's nothing like working with a bunch of fantastic professionals. I wonder when they're going to get here. That is where Asia ends. This is where Europe begins. And so does my hike. Let me lead you through the historic peninsula where the city was born. On the water side, a statue of the father of the modern nation, Kemal Atatürk, looks out across the world. Next, a garden fit for a sultan. The grounds of Topkapu Palace were opened early in the 20th century as Gulhane Park, which means Rose House. The palace was built by Mehmet the Conqueror as the Ottoman Empire expanded across Europe. Today, the back garden provides tranquility and natural beauty close to the heart of the city. The park ends here. Um, Birtani Lutfen. Fresh corn cooked almost to order. Perfect. Thank you. Yum. Mm. Just what you need to refuel. Cobbled Sogum Chesme Street is lined with cafes and wooden houses, popular with artists given its proximity to one of the world's most appealing city centres. Sultan Ahmet Square, the heart of old Istanbul, and these days Snapshot Central. It's where all the tourists congregate and it has some of Istanbul's most magnificent monuments, including the beautiful Blue Mosque. And constant reminders of the city's ancient history. Until 1453, Istanbul was known as Constantinople after Constantine the Great, who created the city and brought all kinds of monuments here to decorate it, including the obelisk of Theodosius, three and a half thousand years old. Another Constantine import, the Serpent Column, originally created to celebrate the victory of the Greeks over the Persians two and a half millennia ago. Finally, the obelisk of Constantine, the full stop at the end of my hike. Or maybe it's an exclamation mark. For a waterside brunch, I'm heading northeast from the city centre to the ritzy suburb of Bebek, which you can reach by road or boat. That'll be my friends arriving up the Bosphorus to join me in this amazing treat. As they say, I think we're going to need a bigger table. This is the great ultimate Turkish breakfast at the stay in Bebek. Menemen is my favourite. That's egg and tomato, but you've got pastry, you've got cheese, you've got vegetables, you've got everything that anyone could want. Bring your appetite and your friends. Anyway, time for seconds, just further down the Bosphorus at the Shangri-La. 
In the Besiktas area of Istanbul, there is still a very busy ferry port with boats shuttling back and forth to Asia. The terminal is about 10 meters over there. And so if you are just thinking you'd like a snack before you cross to another continent, the Shangri-La is just the place. I'm just going to Asia. Call me a continental drifter on a budget. Is this the best travel bargain anywhere? I am on an intercontinental ferry across the Bosphorus. And for a return ticket plus a cup of tea, I paid about a pound. Once in Asia, you could head for Singapore. It's about 5,000 miles in that direction or you can just gaze at the city all around you. Meanwhile, back on the European side, it's well worth getting to grips with the efficient and inexpensive city transport network. 10. Pass. Ticket sales menu. So, Istanbul has an integrated public transport system and a very good system of automatic ticket machines. You could buy 10 tickets which will get you on any form of transport for about 50 pence each or you can invest a couple of pounds in an Istanbul card and then just top it up as you go. Use it on buses, trams, the metro and ferries. You could pay for a cruise along the Golden Horn or just hop on the local water bus. The ferries are very regular and very reliable. It's a marvellous way to see Istanbul from a different dimension and to appreciate the way that the city embraces you. As well as the golden opportunity to see the golden horn from the water, ferry travel also offers an escape from the traffic that can sometimes clog up the streets, which is important if, like me, you're heading for a sacred site. This is the holiest mosque in Istanbul. It was built by Mehmet the Conqueror in 1458 on the site of the tomb of Ayyub, the friend and standard bearer of the Prophet Muhammad. In Ottoman times, the courtyard of the mosque was used for the coronation of the sultans. Today, even by Istanbul standards, it's fairly lively. Pilgrims congregate here in their thousands. The mosque is regarded by many Muslims as the fourth holiest place in Islam after Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem. The courtyard is dominated by a huge plane tree and the walls are covered with beautiful Isnic tiles. Christianity is also represented in Istanbul, including by this imposing church, which unusually was manufactured many hundreds of miles away in Vienna. The Bulgarian Orthodox Church of Sveti Stefan, St. Stephen's, is notable for being made entirely of prefabricated iron and for its dazzling gilt iconostasis. The parts weigh 500 tonnes and they were floated down the Danube and into the Black Sea. In the 19th century, prefabricated churches were quite a thing and Gustav Eiffel used to make them before he moved into the tower business. And talking of towers... Clock Tower Square and for me the most exciting part of Istanbul. Yes, there's a beautiful historic mosque but also Galata Port, a new district where the waterfront for the first time is properly open. And Istanbul Modern, the beating heart of new Istanbul is right here. There's a real sense of permanence in Istanbul. Of course, you've got so many glorious monuments through the ages, but there's also a sense of excitement and change. You can find a brilliant example of constant reinvention right here in the new home for the Istanbul Painting and Sculpture Museum. The building was constructed as warehouse number five, allowing customs officials to inspect goods after they'd arrived in the city. 
parts of the structure feel to me as though the place has been dismantled and then reassembled using as few of the original parts as possible, bestowing a lightness that enhances the art on display. This extraordinary space is all about transformation. From a humble customs depot to a cutting edge gallery, which contains the story of how Turkey has changed into the modern nation you find today. Finally, let me show you the absolute highlight of my latest visit to Istanbul, a location that began life as an 18th century Ottoman army barracks and more recently served as a car park, a football pitch and a food store. But early in 2023, after eight years of restoration, the complex reopened to immediate acclaim as the new library in Rami. It's one of the biggest libraries in the world, containing rare manuscripts alongside seven million books. I just love the way that a military base has been transformed into a place of learning and enlightenment. Brilliant idea. When I first came to Istanbul decades ago, I felt as though I discovered a hub of humanity, a city of miracles, great and small. I still feel exactly the same. But I love even more dining with the crew at the end of a long day. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.